first of all, going to need a whole shed load of these things to glue on the curved lining. So you can't have too many, I would say about 25 each side. Oh, I've got a bucket full here, I've got enough for several people, so it's not a problem for me, but you might get enough to do one side and then you can do one at a time. Put them as close together as you can. I'll show you how to actually do it when we do it, but the reason I'm telling you all this now is so that you can start looking around in car boot sales and uh, pound shops and stuff. You'll often see 10 for a pound, that kind of thing. So that's what you're looking for, spring clips. I suppose at a push you could use ordinary sort of clothes pegs, but they tend to be the wrong shape. They don't have this reach with the curve, so it comes together here. They tend to be more flat, and so they don't pinch as good in the right place where you want. I suggest you get proper spring clips. Search the pound shops and car boot sales for that. 10 for a pound kind of deal. As many of them as you can find. There's really two main ways to glue on these braces. You either use a go bar deck or you use these wooden clamps. Now you can't use um, any kind of metal clamps because they're too heavy and they'll twist your thin plates and distort the shape. So you need fairly lightweight clamps. Wooden cam clamps are probably the best solution. And I would say you need at least six, preferably 12. So that's the bad news. The good news is that you could make these yourself. I'll probably show you how to make it by hand in the bonus videos at the end. So you'll need a variety of different lengths. They come in different lengths. I would say get two of each, two short, two medium, and two extra long. You can see that some of these I've made myself. You'll save a lot of money if you do make them yourself. Um, so that would be your minimum. Too small, too medium, too long. If the budget stretches for more, then you could get more of the medium and short ones. You'll only ever need two of the really long ones. Again, I'll put the patterns to how to make these in the PDFs so that you can have a go at making them yourself. The alternative to using the wooden clamps is the go bar deck, but you need this domed plate. This is curved, it's actually domed. And there's one for the front and one for the back. These are quite expensive, and then you have to build the actual go bar deck around it so that you can use that to clamp the braces. It's a lot quicker and easier to use a go bar deck without fiddling about with the wooden clamps. I'm recommending that you buy six of these I think in the long run, that's the cheapest way to do it. Also, these are so handy for so many other jobs. The go bar deck is only useful for a few jobs, whereas these can be used for lots of different things. You'll, you'll use them all around the workshop. So if you've got um, a bucket full of those, you can't go wrong. We glue the braces on square like this, and then we carve them. This is my favourite carving chisel, it's curved, which is great for reaching over other braces to get into different areas, reaching over braces to clean up the glue, that kind of thing. A curved chisel is fantastic. Otherwise, you're looking for something like a fairly sizeable chisel. The longer the better, to give you better reach for carving these braces. You also need a smaller chisel for when we're assembling the guitar, we cut notches for the braces, we'll get to all that. So a quarter of an inch chisel would be great. This one is an eighth of an inch chisel. And I use this, if I'm gluing a veneer onto the headstock, then I need to cut a slot for the nut and we need a small chisel to cut the nut slot. So an eighth of an inch chisel for that. So you only really need two chisels, a big one and a small one.
One more option for um, carving is to use these little block planes are beautiful. This is ebony and it's a um, really high quality blade. It makes carving the braces, especially on the back, take minutes. So I'll be demonstrating all that when the time comes. But that is an option, an optional tool for carving the braces. This is an acoustic workboard for making the body. It comes with a leg. When we're assembling the guitar, it's face down on this. And you notice because of the curve, we need to support it around the edge when we're gluing the sides on. We don't want it to be rocking like that. So we use a shim underneath. So here's a standard shim for the same shape guitar that's in, on the PDFs. And this is the um, shoe. So again, when, when we're assembling, this is a way we can clamp. Obviously this shim is the wrong shape for this guitar, but we can clamp that on there and tighten it up underneath with the wing nut. It doesn't have to be a wing nut, it could be any nut. We're not going to be putting a lot of tension on this just to hold it while we do gluing operations later on. If you've already made an electric guitar, then you'll already have these and you won't have to make them again. You can just use the same ones, but I'll include the videos on how to make them on this course. So you'll find them down there. This is the headstock angle jig, two simple rails with an angle on. We clamp our neck in and that's for machining the headstock angle. This is for machining the back of the headstock so that we can take our headstock down to thickness and it will be perfectly flat and level square. It's probably one of the easiest jigs to make, three pieces of wood. Here's a soundboard. We're going to clamp this in here. And basically there's a groove down the middle, which is just a cut with a quarter inch router and two rails. We screw this on so that one piece is in line halfway into the drip groove. And on this side, we leave a gap. About an inch, and then we're gonna use wedges this side. And that's how we apply pressure when we're gluing. So this is called a joining board. It couldn't be much easier to make. It's just a two foot square piece of plywood with a slot down the middle. Doesn't really matter what size. One side is permanently screwed down so that the piece of wood is in line with the drip groove. And the other piece, an inch gap or thereabouts. So they're just made from scrap whatever you can find, whatever you've got lying about. That's the joining board. Again, I'll show you how to use it later on. If you buy your soundboard from us, then you don't need a joining board because your pieces of wood are already joined. And we use it for the soundboard and the back. So you can modify your router base. This is gonna screw on the bottom of here. And then I can draw circles of different dimensions depending on where I've drilled the holes. Alternative to that would be to spend some money on a tool like this. So first of all, you have to buy the actual Dremel itself. And then it fits into this jig, which is infinitely adjustable or cut in different sizes. So again, it just spins around a pivot and 
the advantage of this one is that you can adjust it infinitely and get any size you want. If you're planning on doing any kind of fancy wooden rosette, then you're going to need the router jig for doing that. But if not, I would suggest that you stay with making your own. So to cut this slot, I'll be using my ordinary router and an eighth of an inch cutter to make a slot that's just big enough for two black white black strips. So this is an eighth of an inch cutter that fits into my router. Now if we use the same technique but with a larger cutter, then instead of just a sing single black white black, we could fit another strip in the centre. So I'll also be demonstrating that. Well in the kit I've provided three strips which will fit into a quarter of an inch slot. One other thing to note is that this cutter, this, this is an expensive cutter, specifically for cutting things like rosettes. It's a down cut. You can see the spiral on it. The idea is that there's less tear out when you're cutting. If you want to, you could buy expensive cutters for cutting your rosette and you'll get a cleaner cut. But you don't need to, you could just use a standard quarter inch router that comes free with the router. While I'm on the subject of router bits, we will be using the bottom bearing profile router and that's for trimming the top and back down to size when we've glued the back and the back and the front on um, again you can just do that by hand you don't need it but routing will save a lot of time one of the other main problem areas is joining the neck how are you going to join the neck so in the kit provided is two barrel nuts and two dowel nuts. So this bit lives in the neck. And it's bolted on from the inside. The alternative to bolting the neck on would be to use a dovetail joint. Now, doing a dovetail joint by hand is not included in the course. If you're an expert at working by hand then by all means go for it but I'm trying to make it simple for folk and cutting a dovetail by hand is not simple so what I do recommend is if you're going to attempt a dovetail then use a dovetail jig so you can make or buy a router jig for making dovetails in which case you'll also need a dovetail cutter and when I cut a dovetail what I do first is cut with a straight cutter and then the final pass is done with the dovetail cutter. So really for cutting a dovetail you need two cutters. So another one of the problem areas is going to be bending the sides. So I don't recommend, especially for your first guitar, doing anything like this with a cutaway. Although I will demonstrate that. Stick with a fairly standard shape and it makes it a lot easier. Just three bends, one, two, three. The rest is straight lines. This is my current bender. I'm going to show you how to make a cheap version of this. If you've got the money to spend, then I would definitely recommend that you get something like this. If not, have a go at making your own. I'll leave it up to you, depending on what your budget is, to decide which method you use. So that's all the extra tools that you'll need. Hopefully that's not too bad. I will show you cheap ways to do everything, so don't worry if the budget doesn't stretch too far. But if you're gonna make an acoustic guitar, then you're gonna need some tools. Unfortunately, that's the way it is. Because we run courses here, and sometimes I've got up to four people, I've got several sets of tools that are just mostly sitting idle. So we're planning or we may be thinking, if you guys are interested, that we could put some kits together and you could maybe hire the, um, say, a set of clamps and um, that kind of thing. So leave a comment, let me know what you think, send me an email or whatever, if you're interested in maybe hiring some tools to build your acoustic guitar.